Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about my most disappointing romance reads from 2022. I don't normally make negative content on my channel, that's not something I strive to do. However, sometimes you're just in the mood to rant. <laughs> And that's today for me. I have 10 books today that I'm gonna talk about that disappointed me last year. These aren't necessarily bad books. I even gave some of these books four stars. Some of them just really disappointed me. I was expecting amazing and I was left not amazed, unfortunately. I also wanna say before I get into this video, if these are some of your favorite books, please do not think this is an attack on you. I am not also trying to discredit the author or bash on this author of these books, I will read probably almost every single, almost every single author again that's on this list. Some of these books just didn't work for me and I am so sad because I had very high expectations for them. The first one we have is a Katie Roberts book. This is Wrong Bed, Right Guy. This is her first book in the Come Undone series. I didn't even know about this book until I looked into her backlist. So I've been really wanting to go into my favorite author's backlist books. Um, and this was, I believe her first, one of her first ever published books. And I was like, great, my Libby has the audio. Let's just listen to it. And then I can just read her books in publication order, the ones I have not read yet. I think that was my big mistake. <laughs> I've been noticing that has been a mistake of mine for um, a lot of the books that I have gone back to read because uh, they're not as good as their recent stuff, unfortunately. This one I gave two stars to. I actively disliked this book. I am also not a big fan, not a big fan of someone doing something something to somebody while they're asleep and they have no consent over it it's um one thing if they're in a relationship and they like give their full consent of like yeah you can do whatever you want to me in my sleep honey like whatever go for it this is another case entirely where our heroine is really crushing on the artist and owner of this art studio she works at she knows that he lives above the art studio so she breaks in one night in wearing a trench coat with nothing underneath it knows which room is his so she goes into his room to get with him while he's asleep and then while he wakes up he's gonna like get with her when he sees her because she'll be all over him or something like that like she's gonna seduce him while he's asleep so she does just that which no is a big no-no for me and then the guy that she planned to seduce isn't the guy it's that guy's brother and so it's a romance with the brother that's why it's wrong bed right guy <laughs> That's the title. I don't care for those kinds of romances where unconsensual stuff like that happens. I don't care. Like you're doing stuff to someone while they're asleep. How can they consent to that? The heroine here was also just like, to me, awful. Like I did not like her, which is very rare for me to say, but I, I actively disliked the heroine of this book. So um, this was a two star for me. This is just disappointing to me because I really love Kitty Roberts books. And this is, I think the last one that I've read by her. I don't think I've read any others. <laughs> from her since this because I think it like scarred me. We'll say her writing is way better now, just saying so. So next I have a whole series in general. I have the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. I was expecting to adore these books. I gave most of them three stars. They were not my favorite at all. I have a whole entire Bridgerton reading vlog. If you want to know my thoughts on every single book in the series, I deep dove into that series. So in general, the gist of it is I didn't care about these books as much as I thought I would, as much as my friends do, and it stinks. If I'm able to love the hero that makes me love the romance even more, I did not love, I think, hmm, I think I only liked, liked two of these heroes. And they weren't a Bridgerton brother. No. <laughs> I just didn't get why these women, these amazing women, because the women in here were amazing. They were the three star in those books. <laughs> They they themselves were the three stars of these books. I didn't get why these amazing women were falling for these poo-poo heads of dudes. Like I <laughs> didn't understand. An example would be Sir Philip. Like everyone loves Sir Philip. It was so disappointing because I was absolutely supposed to love his book with Eloise and like it really, really, really fell flat because I did not like Philip. I was like, I don't get why Eloise is falling for this man who's been nothing but mean and rude and thinks horrible things about his children and horrible things about his family. Like, I don't get how Eloise did it. Like, Eloise deserves so much more. <laughs> um, so I am liking how the TV show is changing some things. I didn't necessarily love season two of Bridgerton more than the book because the book was one of my favorites, season two, or book two was one of my favorites. But um, there was, the only three that I really liked in this series were the Viscount Who Loved Me book two, book six, When He Was Wicked, which is Francesca's book, and then um, It's In His Kiss, which is book seven, which is Hyacinth's book. All the other ones, 
no thanks. Next is one that I'm gonna have to restrain, restrain myself from. Um, this is Don't Speak by Diane Lane. This is, I think, my only one star for the entire year. I have a whole, uh, if I can remember, there's a vlog that I talked about this book, uh, three books that I read, three indie romances, and this one. I was expecting to love it. We have a hero who uh, does not speak and um, it's his romance with his stepsister. I was fully expecting to love this. I was so looking forward to it. The cover is stunning. The premise sounded amazing. This is one of the worst books that I have ever read. And I don't say that lightly. I don't enjoy saying that. I hate being in this negative mindset. Oh my gosh. I, this book, I don't think it's okay to write about graphic sexual things happening between minors, especially a 14 year old girl, Four, 14 years old. I don't enjoy reading about that. I don't know who enjoys reading about that. There were just so many things in this book that made me viscerally angry. We're gonna move on because I don't wanna get too much into this because I could scream about this book. <laughs> so um, you can watch that vlog if you wanna know more of my thoughts, um, but this book was a definite no. Next is one that makes me really sad from Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. Uh, this book was like fine. I gave it 3.5 stars. It's not a bad book. Um, I was just expecting to fully love it. It was one of my five star predictions for the year. I did not love this. I love the ending part. The beginning, not so much. Um, I go more in depth in my five star prediction vlog that I talk about. It's the last video, not video, sorry. It's the last book I talk about in that vlog if you just wanna jump to that uh, section. But there were just some things in here that I was not okay with. There are many fat phobic comments and just weight jokes those are absolute red flags for me i don't enjoy any joking whatsoever about someone's weight i don't think that is appropriate in any circumstance whatsoever and um the hero in here did that often to the heroine he literally nicknames her meatball there's so many quotes i could read from from here where he jabs at her with jokes about her weight he literally says that you need to lose weight or your skates will buckle underneath you that's how much you weigh and ugh, it's just also Mariana Zapata's writing in here just wasn't great with that either because it would have been one thing if characters said like oh that's such that's so wrong that's so mean of a guy to say like no when the heroine tells her family about the joke they laugh and they're like that's such a good joke and I'm like how is that a good joke how is that a, how are any of those good jokes like that is so horrible to me like I can't stand that I cannot see how the hero from the beginning of this book making jokes and making fun of our heroine could be the same guy from the end of the book that was so sweet and so caring. Like I could not connect the two men whatsoever. They acted like complete two different men in my brain. This man is also 30 years old and he acts like he's 20 or even 18. Like he's not mature whatsoever in certain aspects. Um, it's the beginning of the book also. It's the beginning of the book when they're like enemies that they literally act like they're teenagers instead of being 30 years old. And then they get more mature as the book goes on, but have they changed in age? No, they've been the same age the entire time. Don't get me wrong, I love the skating part. I love that figure skating. I love the relationship at the end of the book, like the 50% mark over when they started to become friends. The beginning part of this book was such a letdown for me. Next, I have 10 Trends to Seduce Your Best Friend by Penny Reed. I also have a vlog of me reading this book. I really wanted to pick up two books that had celiac disease representation. Uh, I knew that this book did as well as another one. I liked that book. I didn't like this one. There were just many things in here that <laughs> were not my favorite thing ever. Again, you can watch that vlog if you wanna know more of my thoughts because I go in depth. Mo the majority of that vlog is me talking about and ranting about this book. I gave this book two stars. Um, one of the things I did not like was number one, the, the celiac disease representation in my eyes was not great. Um, the romance between these two was not great. And the whole trends that they had to do oh, were so cringy. I've blocked most of this book out of my brain because it's over 500 pages, right? Sorry, I gotta check. No, it's almost 500 pages. I don't think it needs to be that long. The heroine? I did not like her. The hero, I loved him. He was so caring and so sweet and really cared for her in certain aspects. And I liked his reaction to celiac disease and talk about celiac disease more than hers. And she's the one who had celiac disease. This book just really disappointed me because I really wanted to love a book that had celiac disease rep in it. And I just didn't. And I'm now learning that Penny Reed is definitely not for me. I just didn't also enjoy this writing style whatsoever. And maybe it was too meta for me when it came to the social media trends and everything. But like, this book left me cringing throughout the majority of this book. I have two monster romances I need to mention. Uh, first is The Lady and the Orc by Finley Fenn. I'm sorry, Caitlin. <laughs> 
cute little nine buddy read this book and like i'm sorry girl she dnf'd it she was the smart one and dnf'd it i finished this i just heard so many of my wonderful friends who love monster romances like talk about this book in the series and this author and i was like i really want to read it and then caitlin saw some fan art on instagram and i was like oh this is from this series like i want to read it and i was like okay great let's buddy read the first book and then we can get to that book i think it's like book five is the art she saw i was like okay what does buddy read the series i don't know if that's ever gonna happen <laughs> And I have read reviews saying like, oh, this series gets better. You need to read the other books. I've also heard from people that is a lie. <laughs> Not true. They get worse or they stay the same or whatever. But it's very definitive that book one is the least favorite among the series. But there are people who have given it like four stars or higher. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like the hero of this book kidnaps her heroine. She's a human and he's an orc. And like he forces her to be his mate and to be married or whatever. And he would essay her all the time and like expect her to love him and never leave him and he would lie to her constantly like he would get caught up in lies and then she would catch him in a lie and he would just start sobbing in her lap like i'm so sorry but like, poor me pity me you caught me lying like dude i don't get why the heroine fell in love with him at the end like he treated her like dirt even though he claimed otherwise like no dude you would not not good they also just kept screaming at each other and fighting and i don't understand how they fell in love like at all and this is not a monster romance that i am going to be recommending to other people if you do love the rest of the books in the series please tell me which one i should read and if i can skip to it please because this like wasn't it for me another one that i was really looking forward to that i just <laughs> fell flat for me is captured by the monsters by r l calder and m j marston's sorry that's a lot of letters uh, i just had to say <laughs> i was really wanting to read this it's a me issue i did not know going in that this was a why choose romance so that's a me issue obviously if you don't know i don't really vibe well with those anyway i, d I just don't i want everyone to be be together and happy i don't want a bunch of men just fawning over one woman i i don't prefer that and this book i feel like really 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 solidified the fact that why choose romances are not for me they're, they're not they're not things I should pick up anymore. This is about a heroine who lives in this world where um, humans live. It's kind of like the underworld and then the above world is the humans, but they're run by the demons and the shadows in the underworld. And so there are kind of like sacrifices that are brought to the underworld realm um, to protect the upper sphere, you know? And so the heroine is one of those sacrifices that gets chosen to go back into the down world where all the monsters and boogeymans live and she gets chosen i think by three shadow entities to be with them and to be theirs it does get hot at times but there are some things in here that just weren't explained all that well i even wrote in my review i said i thought the world was not explained to the extent i would like for example so many human women were unalived in this book because she was sent down with a bunch of other human human women the heroes claim that their people cherish women like when, why, how, if you keep killing them. There's just a bunch of things that I just didn't understand about this book and this world building and this world in general. Um, there were certain scenes in this book that I do remember that I was like, ooh, that was fun. Ooh, that was hot to read. But um, in general, this book was just very disappointing for me because I love me a good monster romance. And this is one of the few monster romances that I've read this year that I've been like, darn, you weren't that great for me. Next, I have Claimed by J.R. Ward. This is her first book in the layer of the Wolven series. This is her apparently wolf shifter romance. This is probably my least favorite J.R. Ward book I've ever read. And that's so sad. I literally have an entire shelf at the bottom over here that's almost completely filled with her books because I love her book so much. This just wasn't it. I don't even remember like almost anything about this book. I know it's a werewolf shifter. This heroine like works with saving wolves and then there's this guy on a motorcycle that comes and like is in the town and they fall in love and they're trying to take down these people who are trying to kill the wolves and <laughs> it's very chaotic it's all over the place it is not i don't feel like it was well structured and like the twist happened and i didn't care and it's so sad because all my friends also gave this book two stars like it's like a common thing that people just don't like this book it's a total miss and i feel so bad because i love jr ward's writing so i really hope her books that are coming out in 2023 are better than this one uh, next is one that makes my heart very sad uh this is sin insider by kimberly reese 
and one of my favorite romance books ever is Nerdgasm. I gave that book five stars. I loved it. One of my favorite heroes of all time, this sweet, caring boy named Theo. Like, I love him so much. I don't understand how that author could write the hero of this book. Um, I actually did not finish this book. So this is the only, I think, DNF that I have in this whole video. Um, so our heroine has a brother and this is a romance with her brother's best friend. Ugh, I don't want to get too much into this, but Lawson, the hero in here, not a great dude. I don't understand how Kimberly Reese could have written Lawson and then wrote Theo. Theo, who's one of my favorite characters of all time, and then Lawson here exists in written form, and I don't understand how. Lawson is very, oh, he pissed me off so much. So long story short, uh, the heroine comes in to visit from Chicago to her very small town, and she's at this farmer's market when she comes in to visit the first day. She's all done up after her day of work, she like drives back to her small town. She has like tight fitting clothes on, her hair done, her makeup done. Lawson can see this woman from the back and is like, just sees the back of her. And is like, oh my gosh, that looks like my dream girl. Look at those clothes on her. Her hair is all done pretty. Like, oh my gosh, she looks stunning. How'd you get her number? Things happened where he's not able to intercept her and she runs off. They don't meet each other. He does not know that that is his best friend's little sister. He ends up going to breakfast the next day at his best friend's house. And there he sees the heroine. She opens the door in her PJs, messy bun. And he says, hey dude, what's up? Treats her like a little sister and thinks nothing of it. They even have to work on this renovation thing on her parents' property. They're renovating the barn. They spend time together. He sees in her nothing, like a, only like a little sister. Like he sees her nothing romantic wise. And then he walks into a bar one night. She's all done up for a night out on the town. Like she did her makeup, her hair, and she has nice clothes on. Like she's out on the town. And he ends up seeing her and is like, oh my gosh, I, can't stop thinking about her now. Like, I can't believe she looks this way. Like, he only started feeling things for her after he noticed that she looked good wearing makeup and um, having her hair done and she could he could see her butt in jeans. I despised him. <laughs> I despised him. The thing that made me close the book is like, they end up doing stuff on her parents' porch in the middle of the night, like on the street, on her porch parents porch like on the stairs of her parents porch and I'm like that would be mortifying like why that specific area you couldn't go inside or go in your car like you have to do it on the stairs of your parents house no thank you <laughs> and lastly is another one that hurts my heart but this is the orcs empress by Lila Fay. I have been loving Lila Fay's books they're just like really fun monster romances that really make me cackle and laugh and just Give me an amazing time. This series, the Silver Fury series, is definitely, I feel like, her best work ever. Specifically book one, this is about an orc warrior falling in love with a human woman. In the first one, he like kidnaps her and takes her on a journey and is like, throughout the journey, I'm gonna convince you to be my wife. And she's like, <laughs> okay, great, good luck, because I hate orcs. And so that's the first book. This is book three that takes place, uh, it time jumps, I believe, five years after book two. And I just felt like, the writing of this book was completely different than books one and two. This book was not bad by any means. I think I gave this book three or 3.5 out of five stars. It wasn't bad. It was an enjoyable read. I just adored a book one. I gave it five stars. And so this was a little disappointing for me. And this was just boring compared to the other two books in the series that I just adore and love. So I love Lila Faye. I'm going to keep reading Lila Faye, but this one just sadly disappointed me. Anyways, so you have it. Those are 10 books that disappointed me in 2022. Again, I'm sorry if you love these books. Please let me know why you love these books in the comments down below. If you've read any of these books, also let me know down below. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me what emoji are we gonna do? Let's do a wolf emoji because we talked about werewolves in this video. Unfortunately, a werewolf book I did not enjoy, but um, leave a wolf emoji in the comment section down below. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.